Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you the 101s of tempering chocolate. And with that we're going to make these cute, adorable chocolate lace pops. So to begin, these are the ingredients you're going to need. I used white chocolate and I just bought the Lind bars. And I used a semi-sweet dark chocolate Calais. This is Couverture chocolate, has a really nice melt. And then for the inclusions, I have this white chocolate crisp pearl that I bought from Calibo. It's essentially like eating a Rice Krispie that's covered in chocolate. It's super good. And I also bought the mini version, which is white milk and dark chocolate, also from Calibo, which is labeled the Mona Lisa brand as well. All of these will be in the description box below so you can see exactly where I got them. Another thing you'll need, which is really important to tempering chocolate, is a food thermometer. This is just a digital one. And you'll need popsicle sticks. You will need a round cookie cutter. We're just going to trace with this, not do anything else. And we'll also need some disposable piping bags and a roll of acetate as well. So let's get started. So the first thing I did was I traced circles onto parchment paper and I put my acetate right on top. And repeat this process for as many trays as you are making. I am making two trays worth so I prepped both the trays. My next order of business was to crush my candy canes. I took a mallet and crushed them into smaller pieces. That way I can sprinkle them onto the chocolate pops along with the other inclusions. I just put this in a bowl and set it aside for later. Now it's time for the most daunting part of this, tempering chocolate. A lot of people are intimidated with the process of tempering chocolate, but the method we're using today, which is the seeding method, is a very easy method. So the first thing I did was break the bar up into smaller, even pieces. This was a pre-bought bar, so the grooves were already molded into it, so it was easy to break apart. Then I took a third of that chocolate from that batch and I cut them into even smaller pieces. This is the chocolate we're going to use to add to our melted chocolate, which is part of the seeding process. First thing is we're going to melt our white chocolate. This is a chocolate you do not want to leave. It can easily scorch even though it's in a bain-marie. So you're going to want to move it around and keep a very, very close eye on it. Now people will argue that white chocolate is not chocolate, but it is chocolate because it contains the cocoa butter and it does need to be tempered. So once it's melted and you don't see any large pieces, you can go ahead and take this off of your bain-marie and continue to mix it even while it's off the stove. This is a very important part of tempering. You're going to want to keep moving that chocolate around. So now we're going to add back the already crystallized chocolate back into our melted chocolate. And what this does is it helps recrystallize this melted chocolate back properly to its solid form. You're going to have to do this in stages and you're going to have to keep moving this chocolate around. It's like the particles of the solid chocolate and the particles of the melted chocolate need to blend back together. That's essentially what you're doing here and it's going to take some patience. But believe me, it's worth it at the end because you will end up with a shiny, smooth chocolate that has a nice snap and that's exactly what you're looking for here. Now throughout this process, you'll need to constantly check the temperature of the chocolate to make sure it's reaching the temperature levels it's supposed to reach. For white chocolate, you're going to want to get it to 29 degrees Celsius. That is the working temperature for this particular chocolate. And now we're on to the next, dark chocolate. We're going to repeat the seeding method all over again. This is a Couverture dark chocolate. There are a few small differences between tempering this chocolate versus tempering white chocolate. This chocolate contains more cocoa butter than any other chocolate, so it contains more fat. It is more fluid when it melts, so it is a little bit easier to temper. 
it still is however a game of patience and you'll have to continue doing this in stages and keep that chocolate moving. You'll also consistently need to check the temperature while you're moving and agitating this chocolate around. So you'll want to get this chocolate to a temperature of 31 to 32 degrees Celsius. That is the working temperature for dark chocolate. Once you've achieved that, you can put it in a piping bag and we're ready to go. So these are pretty easy. You're just going to start with circular motions on the inside of the circle that you trace right onto your acetate and you're just going to keep doing this. There's no rules to this. You can do anything that you want. I just decided to kind of make it look like a flower or a snowflake and I just continued making circular motions so that they can all connect and solidify together and then I just made a mound for the popsicle stick to rest on. At this point, this is all about personal preference. You can add whatever you want to these lace pops. You can keep them plain. You can add what I added. You can add pretzels. You can add other types of chocolate. The world is your oyster, so it's completely up to you what you want to do with these at this point. Once you've completed your lace pops, these will cool at temperatures between 26 to 28 degrees Celsius or 78 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit. They'll be perfectly fine if you leave them on a counter. If you want them to cool faster, you can always put them in the fridge. However, you can leave them out. They are tempered chocolate. They will cool at room temperature. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it has inspired you to make something chocolatey in your own kitchen. If you like this content, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. Hope to see you guys next time. Bye!